everybody. Welcome back. My good name is Brian Sakwe and as well interact with us and let us know where you're watching us from at uh, Y254 channel underscore poly Instagram X threads and the rest as well. Function reminds is at Brian Sakwe 101. Our guest is already live with us in the studio and this topic about filing your taxes the rush hour sometimes, especially when they have issued a deadline. And this is from the legendary Kenya Revenue Authority. We have an expert from Kerry. She is uh, Ms. Velma Miguta. She's an ETIMS expert. And she's going to tell us what exactly is ETIMS. Why do you need to pay taxes? <laughs> have you ever paid taxes? Can you evade taxes? What are some of the punishments? Actually, uh, if you were to evade paying tax, what is likely to happen to you as your constitutional right right here in Kenya? And maybe also what are, what are some of the types of taxes? And I understand if you're in business, you know the language you're talking about. And Karibu Sana, Ms. Velma Miguta, how are you? Great to meet you as well. Great to meet you. Uh, my name is uh, Velma Miguta. Right. I work with KRE, Domestic right. Taxes Department. Oh, the moment you just say KRE. I tell you, it's in capital. <laughs> KRA, Kenya Revenue Authority, is already in capital. <laughs> so at least today I want us to at least understand yeah. what KRA is all about. Right, yeah. The kind of people that work with KRA. So at least right. the next time you hear KRA, you yeah. also know that we are also human. Yes. And we are very friendly. No need to be well, scared. No need to be scared. They're not us. coming for you. <laughs> so basically, not at let's all. Get, exactly. So let's get to know you a little bit. How did you become uh, an ETIMS expert? And maybe also, how did you get employed by KRA? Maybe your qualification, backgrounds, academia as well. Just like a little story about you. Uh, nice. On uh, my qualifications, I have a bachelor's degree mm -hmm. in communications and sociology. Right. Then when I was employed with KRA, I started as a marketing person. Right. So I worked in marketing department for about four years. Right. Then after I upgraded f through the Kessler qualifications, I was moved to domestic taxes right. on the teams. By that time, it was a teams project, the yes. old way of invoicing. That right. is how I became one of the experts in ETIMS. Right. Yes. For how many years right now at the institution? Right now, I'm with Kiari for nine years. Nine years, almost yes, clocking yes. a decade. Good professional uh, years of experience right there, right? Meaning that you're now full expert. But then also, let's talk about series of filing taxes. It's a thing in our country, especially when you guys have issued uh, a deadline. You're saying by 15th of April, if you not have filed your taxes, ABCD is likely to happen. What is likely to happen, by the way, if somebody fails to file their returns early? It depends, again, with the obligation that you're having. Filing right. taxes de is dependent ma majorly on the obligation you're having. If you're having VAT, we all know that is the deadline is on or before the 20th of every month right. where you're required to file and account for the taxes that mm -hmm. are supposed to be paid on the same. If no, there are penalties according to the TP and the VAT Act on the same. Right. If you're registered for the pay, the, uh, the pay as well, you're supposed to file either before or on 9th of every month. Yes. If you're registered for income tax right. and uh, that is the IT2C which is income tax company right. and uh, IT1 that is the income tax individual you're supposed to account for the same on yes. the 30th of the following year right. or the reaccounting period. Right. So filing your returns and uh, making the necessary payments is dependent majorly on the obligation that you are having right. currently. Right. And also maybe let's just define it a little bit, filing tax returns. <laughs> what exactly does it mean for a person who doesn't understand? What is it that we usually file, especially us right here? You know, for Sisi Tunaji to our front end users, Tunenangatu to log in pale kwele ITAC, da 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 In fact, most of us even have no idea what happens in that transaction. It's like, umenda tu saibu kambi ya msewa saiba, hey, file for me my returns. Yes, what exactly is it and what happens? Nice. So what basically that means is like for the pay. Pay right. is accounted for by your employer. Right. So your employer accounts for the deductions and the payment that they subject to you every right. month. Mm -hmm. But you as an individual, you're supposed to be responsible for your own obligation. By right. that we mean that when you're filing your return at the end of the year, that is mm -hmm. by 30th June or earlier, right. you're supposed to just to confirm that, let's say, Kerry, when they deducted my pay, did they remit the same? So yes. just confirming that I'm indeed an employee of KRA and indeed KRA subjected me to some of the paid taxes which they collected right. on behalf of, right. of the, of, like now let's say you're employed by KBC. KBC right. is collecting the pay on behalf of 
yes. their yeah, employees. Employee, so employee. what the employees yeah. are required to do is just to account for the same. You're just confirming that these deductions really happened right. and really you are an employee of the same organization. Right. And if you're doing, let's say, you're a business person, and you've right. met the threshold of, uh, let's say, the VAT, the TOT, and the likes. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to account for your profits right. every month. Because you know now the, how taxes normally works, like uh, when you're paying the VAT, it's normally charged on the profit that you've incurred. Yes, from your the pay. Or yes, yeah, no, okay. or not the pay on the, let's say now, the we are doing the net. Yeah, the net, the, right. The tax is normally subjected to the net income, right. not the whole sum. Right. Yes. Wow, interesting. Now, now in your because as we are the front end, this is the login, you come na back end. So, what is usually happening behind uh, at the back end right there, where you guys are just receiving? Sako has filed their returns. Da, 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 da. What are the details that you guys are receiving there, and what are some of the records that you guys are keeping? Actually, the only records that we keep is just the taxes bit. Or the tax part. Yes, we are not interested in any other. We call it the non-fiscal data. Right. Whatever appears on what your employer had uh, sent to us, what is more important to us is the taxes bit. Right. That's it. Mm -hmm. So whatever is in that transaction, whatever is being transmitted to us, what carries the day is the taxes which are being deducted on your end. Right. Right. Interesting one. Now, uh, let's get to now, before we get to E-teams and how you guys are doing uh, the rest of the uh, onboarding, uh, maybe you can point to us, maybe walk us through the journey of what are some of the types of taxes that, you know, Kenyans should pay depending on their level. Because I understand they have specific, they're very specific. And you get, now that you're an expert from Kerry, <laughs> would really like to understand, like, what are some of the types of taxes? And maybe it could be somebody paying uh, the wrong kind of tax and they have no idea especially when it comes to the categorizations and what they do. You've mentioned stories at trading, there's individuals as well. And now it's your constitutional obligation as a citizen of this country to pay tax. Before you even tell us, is it a must for one to pay tax? You can <laughs> carry us through that journey. What are some of the types of taxes? We are having various types of taxes, as I've mentioned, that the major one is the VAT right. that is being paid by the persons in business. And you know VAT is just... Uh, the people who are in business are just the agents of collection. Right. And uh, that is where we are normally having that misconception that who needs to really pay the VAT? Right, Who yes. bears the burden of the VAT is the end user. That is right. the end consumer, you and me. Mm. If I go and purchase probably milk from the supermarket and uh, that product is subjected to VAT, yeah. at the end of the day, it's not the trader who is paying for the VAT or is accounting for the VAT. Right. It's you, the end consumer, because there's no way you're going to claim for it. Mm. So that is one of the major taxes that uh, the traders are paying, that is the VAT. That is value added The, the value added tax. Okay. Then we are having uh, the pay, that is for employment income yeah. only, for, people for the who people are who are employed. Right. And so um, if you're employed, now you're paying a tax called pay, pay, pay yes. as you Pay earn. as you earn, right. which is normally collected by your employer. It's normally right. not sent to you, to your account, then you decide to pay care or not. Yes. It's automated. Right. The moment under the graduated scale, if you meet the threshold of being taxed, that is okay. uh, if you exceed the 24000 per month, yes. then there's that yeah. monthly pay deduction on the same. Yeah. Then again, we are having the corporation tax, which is being charged at the end of the year right. for both the individual and uh, the company. Right. Then we are also having the rental income. Rental uh, income? Yes, then rental income for is uh, for the landlords. Right. And there are two folds to the same. We are having mm. the commercial rent commercial and the rent. residential rental. Mm -hmm. So residential rental is for the normal one, okay. who have just rented your premises for purposes of staying. Mm. Then for commercial rent is for those people who have rented your facility right. to conduct some businesses on the same. Yeah, then like say at a mall or a hypermarket. Yes. Nice. You know, right. Or so KRA is also benefiting from that. <laughs> Luke have said benefiting. <laughs> now a couple You know KRA is you and me. So <laughs> At one right. point or the other, you build, yeah. both of us build carry. Right. Then we are having another tax, the turnover tax. Right. TOT is for... Turnover, I'm, I'm usually confused, Kidogo. Right. Uh -huh. TOT is for these traders who, have, who are neither here or nor there. By right. neither here or there, I mean that they have not met the threshold of being categorized as VAT traders. Right. But uh -huh. they are trading every day. They are mm -hmm. having like a consistent business. Right. So those ones also we categorize them under TOT so that they can 
mm. account and subject them right. for the incomes. And there's so many others. I think I'm remembering excise duty tax, yes, yes. custom duty tax. Please talk about them. Lazima, <laughs> lazima, before we go to end the story now. Is it a must for one to pay tax? Uh, the excise duty tax, so what does it So we're having excise. Uh -huh. Excise duty is subjected to the traders who are dealing in excisable supplies. Uh -huh, and that means? By excisable supplies, we are meaning the supplies that you can do without. Right. Okay. Like uh -huh. juice, mm. uh, cigarettes, we are ice having cream. ice cream, we are having... <laughs> Even alcohol, you can <laughs> do without alcohol. it, come on. <laughs> so this, initially right. the, the only commodity which was subjected to excise was tobacco products. Right. Like the cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So over time, then uh, after the deliberation with our policy and the lawmakers, we, we were like, hold on. Yes. These supplies, you can do without them. Like, mm -hmm. will you die if you don't do alcohol? Right. No. Mm -hmm. So we subjected the rest, like, the commodities that we feel that you can do without mm -hmm. is subjected to the, that tax. So what basically it means that who is subjectable to excise duty? Right. So the excise duty is subjected to the traders who are dealing in the production of the excisable goods, which I've right. just mentioned earlier. Right. And how it works is you must also register first. Mm -hmm. After you have registered, it's us carry personnel, the ones yeah. who are working that you need to come and visit your premise. Oh, it's a must. It's a must. You cannot Ooh. just, it's a very sensitive right. obligation to have. I see. Uh -huh. And uh, you also have to account for it monthly, depending on the number of stamps mm -hmm. that have been utilized in the line of production. Right. And we are also very keen, we are always very keen on um, the accessible goods and the stamps as well. Right. So that we know how many stamps were purchased from us, how many yes. were approved on the same, and how right. many have been utilized. Yeah, and because you of the fraudulence that yes, comes yes. and now KEBS is in exactly. there now. And right. you see now, whenever a product leaves the premises right. and we find that it's not legit, who is normally accountable, carry. Right. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. backlash Actually falls on us, like be. how did it leave the premises right. without carry being at the watch? So we're yes. always very keen in this companies or these big entities that do the accessible goods yes. so that you we are at par the light and at on par. the same. Right. And the other one we the had mentioned duty. was the custom yeah. duty. Uh -huh. This one is a huge, a huge... Yeah, I don't say the cartels, <laughs> sana, by the way. I wouldn't say the cartels, <laughs> but it's a, uh -huh. it's a tax which is very beneficial. Because right. you see now Kenyans, we, we are mostly dependent on importation of produce. Right. I think the exportation bit is a bit lower compared to importation of the sin. True. So true, what we're also yeah. saying that uh, the fact that some of them we have exempted you from issuing an invoice when you're importing right. does not mean that when the commodity lands or in Kenya, it's exempted yes. from the tax. Right. By the time it lands at the port of entry, that is when we, subject, we start subjecting the same yes. to VAT. Right. So, for example, let's imagine um, importing the latest brand of Tesla right now. Any ship mostly in Mombasa. The report is KRA has not certified or ascertained the value of it. So, what do you guys do? For example, if I'm importing now a Tesla, and you guys need to deduct some money from me, Pale at the port of Mombasa. That is a very good question, and uh, <coughs> for clarity, after you have imported. Right. Nowadays, we have automated the system from the port of entry right. till the time that the good is delivered to the end user, that is you. Right. So when your machine lands or docks at the port, what happens mm -hmm. is you must have uh, a clearing agent right. to do the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And this paperwork, you must also accompany it with the invoices that were issued. Right. from the country where you're purchasing the SIM. The Tesla. Right. Then if we find that uh, this price is not making sense for a better word. Mm -hmm. we have so how will you determine <laughs> the price is not making sense? <laughs> maybe the Tesla is worth, <laughs> maybe the Tesla is worth 50,000 US dollars, but you guys are like, this could be costing 100,000 exactly. US dollars. Exactly, so we also need to do yeah. our due diligence from uh, the country of origin where right. that Tesla was uh, probably manufactured or we are importing from, mm -hmm. then we just do the comparison. Right. How come taxpayer A paid this? You know, there are some very huge margins mm -hmm. that warrants those uh, yeah. checks. Right. But normally, in rare cases, do we go to those inner depths? Mm, the nitty-gritties uh, the the nitty of the same. But what normally yeah. happens after you've, give, you've gotten yourself the clearing agent, 
then uh, we get the documentation, the doc importation documentation from the other end. Then right. we do the calculation from, we just convert the dollars to the Kenyan shillings, depending on the graduated scale, which is on our website, when you just check right. on uh, the importation procedures yeah. and uh, the rates well stipulated within our website, mm -hmm. we calculate, then you're good to go. You're good to go. Uh, lastly, on that part, what could make uh, somebody's container to be withheld until further investigation is done? Misdeclaration. Misdeclaration, that yes. means? Most of the time, you misdeclaration basically means that uh, in the container, we are seeing cars. Mm -hmm. And on the paperwork, you we are seeing household goods. Oh, so yes. you see or now, mitumba. Yes. So uh -huh. it's like, you're not being honest. The Honesty. fact that Kere has given us the leeway of uh, self-assessing ourselves and right. just giving us what you think right. your transaction is worth. Some mm -hmm. of us are still being dishonest. Right. And uh, that is why our officers are always based at the post 24 hours, right. so that they be checking what is coming in and what is getting out of the country. Yes. If indeed the declaration is per what they signed on the papers. Yes. Another one has popped up in my mind. There was a time, I think, towards end of last year, there was an issue at JKIA where, you know, there were people returning. And you guys had said, if you own even an iPhone that's above 500 US dollars, you must declare it, the value and the amount, and then KRA will come and deduct. There's even a story uh, of this uh, lady who had bought a wedding gown, and I don't know, they deducted, I think, the white lady or the white guy, and they left this other one. And there were so many complaints, like, why is KRA restricting even returnees who are abroad and they want to come to Kenya who are just bringing goodies? Maybe somebody even bought an expensive bar of chocolates, but you guys want to, you know, deduct some money from that. I don't know, how, how did that happen? And, and what exactly is going on? One thing that I would want to affirm to Kenyans is we don't make the laws. Right. And uh, that is something that whenever I do, probably I'm um, having this conversation with a different group no. and such questions erupt and you tell them we don't make the laws, they're like, yeah. what do you like mean? What do you mean? Yes. Exactly. We are so just the law enforcers. Oh, you guys are just receiving orders? We... We are guided, right. not, not like we are receiving the orders. Mm -hmm. We are guided. So mm -hmm. as by the guidance given, we have to follow it. Right. Yes. So KRA, we don't come up with these laws. We're just following. We are just going as per guided yeah. by the lawmakers. So what happened to this uh, lady who had bought an expensive gown and KRA was to deduct some money? There's even a, a video of an American, black American guy. He was really venting. How comes you guys have withheld his iPhone? I don't know if it was KRA or the security department at the airport. This was at JKIA, and the video went viral. Mm -hmm. And they were saying they must deduct some money. Lazima Lipia, I declare how much is the phone worth. But it's just a phone. Like, so everyone has a phone, you know. What do you mean you must declare how, mu how, mu how much worth your phone is? That is very interesting, but now again, it still boils down to the law. What does the law say? Mm -hmm. The same law which was passed that when you're a returning resident, mm -hmm. what is he allowed to bring into the country? We don't tax everything. Right. As a returning resident, if you check within our website, there are what is supposed to be right. allowed and the ones which are disallowed. So when yeah. you find that our officers, that one I'm not so sure if it was the security agent at the airport, it was within the customs officers for KRA, yes. which we still need to do some digging. We see where was the mess up. But yeah. it's clearly created within the act what a returning resident is supposed yeah. to have when they're coming back. Right. Because it went even from electronic goods as well. So if you yes, come on yes. a letter TV, and yeah, it's worth 100,000. Uh, Zemo, we send it to. Yes. So it's a must for you to declare that you have to declare this and iPhone most of is the time, worth blah, blah, blah. Most blah. of the time, uh -huh. by the way, I don't know why citizens or mm -hmm. Kenyans as a well, whole, the moment carry official just tells you, I need you to declare. Yes. It's an outro that there's a tax which is supposed to be paid on the scene. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't necessarily mean so. We just want to know what is entering the country. Right. And where has it come from. So, yeah. so it's, it's to possible to ask for receipts of the phone or even... We'll just do the value. Or the value of the yes, phone. We'll just so you check it online? Yes, da, 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 da. yes. We are having the rates from right. whichever country we are having all the rates, mm. then they to be, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will be subject to the tax. Mm. So You just want to know the what? We just want to know right. why it's coming. Mm. Okay, but don't you think that is maybe scaring away returnees and even tourists as well? Because there's that. And I think uh, by then, was it the tourism CS who actually pointed out that? I said, you know, 
this could be definitely absolutely scaring away returnees and even tourists because they'll be subjected to that and it's intense. I wouldn't say it's scaring out the returnees. Mm -hmm. I would say that we just want to be, we just want to have the visibility right. of what is coming into the country. That's right. it. Mm -hmm. Just the visibility, no scaring. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, as we move away from that, so you guys have an interesting system of operations and it's called the ETIMS. Maybe you can now take us through the process. What exactly is ETIMS and what is it doing for a person who is just tuning in right now? Whenever I talk uh, of ETIMS, I have some passion to it because uh, there are so many misconceptions out there which makes us look bad in the mm -hmm. eyes of the public. And today I'm just here just to clarify and make emphasis on one of uh, the misconceptions that the public has that ETIMS mm. is indeed at another tax which carriers come up with. Yeah. And I don't know whenever there's laws that uh, or there are some changes within our system, mm. what the taxpayers normally run to is saying that sister now look at them they've already added a new tax yeah because so <laughs> the taxes are increasing you know you know we went from the housing levy now there's the social health insurance funds and, you know, upon and then nssf so whenever kra pops up kenyans are so mad at you guys like besties <laughs> kenyans which is true but again today now what right. i want the kenyans as a whole to oh, yeah. understand mm. is that ETIMS is not a tax. It's not a tax. Yes. What is it now? ETIMS is a software solution mm -hmm. that Kerry came up with to help simplify the way you issue an invoice. Right. And uh, within this conversation, I think at one point we will also be enlightened on the importance of just using the ETIMS. Right. So ETIMS basically, that software, Right. is one that you can install mm -hmm. on any of your devices mm. as long as they are Android right. and Windows. Mm. You can also install them for purposes of invoicing, right. not purposes of tax. tax. It's mm -hmm. just the purposes of invoicing. invoicing. Yes. And maybe you can explain what exactly invoicing is and also who exactly should install this ETIMS ETIM software. software. Right. Nice. Now, the invoicing... What basically we are emphasizing on is that uh, on the TPA Act, mm -hmm. it states the input and the output VAT. Mm -hmm. And that is why ETIMS and invoicing is very important. Mm -hmm. Reason being, at the end of the month, or at the end of the year when you are doing your IT2C, that is the income tax company return, or your IT1, that is an individual tax return, and you are a business person. Oh, so you the first one is like, well, for example, come up with KBC Sasa. Yes. The one that you mentioned. Yes. Uh -huh. So how does it help? So for KBC, let's say this building, mm -hmm. you've rented it out. Mm -hmm. Someone is offered this space. Mm -hmm. So that means KBC is paying rent probably to myself, right? Mm -hmm. And myself, I will do the accounting right. for the rental income mm -hmm. a month. Because this is uh, a commercial property that means the landlord is registered for VAT. Right. Hence, before you pay the landlord as KBC, right. the landlord must issue you with a valid ETIMS invoice. Right. Why would they issue with a valid Good. ETIMS invoice? Mm -hmm. Because this space that KBC is occupying, mm -hmm. it's for furtherance of their business. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as we had mentioned earlier when we were starting the conversation is, Mm -hmm. Taxes is normally subjected to your net income. Yes. How do we arrive at your net income? Mm -hmm. The net income is arrived at when after deduction of all the expenditure right. that you incurred within that period of the business right. and within the period of filing your return. Yes. So what, did, what are we saying about what is the relationship between invoicing yes. and items? Mm -hmm. For KBC to claim the rent mm -hmm. or your salaries, Yes. or even uh, any other expenses that they incurred mm. towards furtherance of this business, right. they're supposed to account for it mm. using the a valid tax invoice. That's that is the, the ETIMS invoice. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other question was, uh, who is supposed to onboard ETIMS? Yes. Everyone, as per the TPA Act, 
everyone who is Tipia indulging. Act is taxpayers yes. Act. <laughs> you know, there's tax a lot of initiatives. Yeah. So, lot of according to the Tax there. Procedures Act, right. under Section 16A, right. 1C, mm. it says that individuals who are subjected right. to any business income, mm. you're supposed to onboard items. And mm. not just onboarding, mm -hmm. you're supposed to onboard mm. and use the same. Right. So if you're a trader falling on any bracket, that is the income tax, you're under VAT, you're a professional, that is the accountant, you're a mamamboga, and this mamamboga, I normally know yeah. that it brings a bit of... Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> mamamboga should not be taxed, <laughs> period. <laughs> so whenever but I mention Should they be taxed <laughs> now that you mentioned it? <laughs> so whenever I mentioned mamamboga is right. like, mm. for a layman, Right. Is the Mamboga yeah. in my mm. estate. Right. But the same law, the TPA Act says that everyone in business is uh, supposed to mm -hmm. onboard items, right. generate invoice, and account for the same mm -hmm. through their filing of the various taxes, the tax right. returns, depending on the obligation that they're right. subjected to. Mm -hmm. So this big question of Mamboga. Mm. Yes. The law says that everyone who is registered or who is trading must issue an invoice. But our focus right now mm. is the return on the revenue. What do I mean by this return on the revenue? Exactly. Our focus yeah. basically now is on the business to business transactions. Business to business transactions. Yes. Uh -huh. Like now I've purchased these supplies. Right. I'm going to use it to sell it. Mm. Not to the end producers, but I'm using it for business to business transactions. Yeah. Or maybe you're so a supplier. Yes, as well. maybe you're a supplier. So the Mamamboga mm -hmm. here, we are saying that the Mamamboga who is doing the supplies. Mm. So, truth be told, and uh, you can take this to any bank. Mm. I'm very impressed, and KRA as a whole is very impressed into how this information of items has reached most of the traders. Trust you me, as we speak now, you cannot trade. Even the Mamamboga, yes. you cannot take your Mamboga the greens to Naivas mm. without issuing an with an invoice. invoice yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this items invoice, now the big question now I yes. know the taxpayers are asking is, yes. why are we subjecting the mboga or the vegetables or the farm produce right. to VAT? Yes, So please. that one I also want to clarify that mm. we are having two types of invoices that are generated from items. Mm -hmm. One is the VAT, which we had started with even the Teams regime yes. before we enhanced the system to the items. Right. We our major focus on the teams devices was for the non VAT the VAT traders, sorry. Yes. So with items it has that uh, functionality of even generating an invoice right. for non VAT. So yes. the fact that non VAT uh, meaning uh, non -V no VAT is charged right, exactly. on the f like now from the law right. the farm produce is exempted from VAT. Mm -hmm. And ETIMS is not there to change the law the way it works. Yes. ETIMS still stands. We are only emphasizing of generation of an invoice right. to enable the person you're trading with or doing the, this transaction with yes. to claim the expenses on the same. Right. And we all know that through this claiming of the expenses, what is reducing your liability. Right. So when Mamamboga, let's say they supply their vegetables to Naivas, right. they are going to generate an invoice and their invoice will be non VAT invoice. Yes. So on the tax rate, mm -hmm. you'll be seen written NA. Mm -hmm. That is not, not applicable. applicable. Yes. Mm -hmm. So no tax is normally charged on uh, the farm produce. Right. No taxes is charged on the persons who are exempted. No taxes is charged on any supplies mm -hmm. that is stipulated under the first and the second schedule of the VAT Act. That is either zero or the exempt rate. Right. Uh, still on that, before we even delve into it uh, further, how adaptable and compatible is it for even startups? Uh, nice. You see, what the beauty about KRA is that we normally listen. From this engagement we are having now, probably we are going to have feedback from the taxpayers. Mm. We might think that uh, the system we had initially deployed, that is the items from uh, 1st of February last year, Right. We thought that it was conducive, it was very simple, but mm. from the feedback we got from the taxpayers is that we needed to work on the system. Yeah. Know that the system we had uh, rolled out was not working, mm -hmm. or it was a bit cumbersome. It's only that it was not favorable to, in, to all the categories of the taxpayers. Why do right. I say this? Mm -hmm. Like for this example that I've given out on the Mamamboga, mm -hmm. and I'd say that for you to install items, either you need to have a laptop, 
desktop, or a an smartphone. Device, you know. Yes, and this mamamboga in my village, they do not have they don't it. have, true. So why would I penalize them for not mm. invoicing yet the system we have brought in place is not favorable? Yes. Then again, we thought that um, this is something we need to work on. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the feedback we have received, we yes. need to work on the same. Uh -huh. So that is why we came up with the simplest, yeah. the most simplest solution, that is the USSD yes. and the EPOS. Right. EPOS is for non-VAT traders mm -hmm. that are dealing with very minimal mm -hmm. transactions. They right. can log into is EPOS yes. through their e EPOS account. Means? Electronic point of sale. Right. And this one is anchored sounds like on a our... Selling, sounds like a, a software machine for... <laughs> You know, doing <laughs> conducting sell, 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 sales transactions. The, right. This one is just actually this one you can log in from anywhere. Right. Like you remember the way you log into your eCitizen account when you want to apply yes. for your driving license, yes. yeah. your passport, and the right. likes. Or even at school when you want to register. For exactly. Your oh, it's that example. Imagine, not even is that example. Similar. It is the same way because it's way. anchored on our eCitizen account. All right. So you uh -huh. log in on your eCitizen account right. and proceed to invoicing. After yes. you've done the registration, the checks carrier will be asking you, yes. are you a Kenyan? What is your ID number? The moment you key in your ID number, it fetches the details from our back end. That is the right. ITAX. Mm -hmm. you imagine how portal. easy it is. Yeah. Then now you'll just be required to input your supplies right. mm -hmm. the, or the supplies you want to make. Yes. And the catch is it must be non-VAT supplies. Non yes. non supplies. And mm -hmm. then again, the same taxpayers had another complaint that yes. I'm in the village. How mm. will I work without a smartphone? Because for you to access the e-citizen portal, yes. you must be on internet and you must be using a smart device. Yes. For me, I'm having vegetables in my rural area and yes. probably I'm supplying to a school or a hospital near me. Yes. How will I invoice? And that hospital will cut the training co trading completely. If I don't issue them, I'll be in an invoice. Right. Care is already cut out for the same. We yes. have a simpler, the simplest one now called yeah. the USSD, mm. which is accessible through the star triple two hash. Oh, star triple two hash. Yes. And imagine when you dial the trust star triple two hash, the mm. only thing that you're required to do is to register using your ID number. Yes. And the same also fetches your details from yes. ITAX. So the big mm. question is what happens if you do not have a PIN? Yes. And you're using the... Oh, that is the KRA PIN now. Yes. Oh, it's possible for somebody to not have. Yes. Because you guys have made it <laughs> mandatory. If you don't have a KRA PIN, you're not a citizen of Kenya, please go to Zimbabwe or Tanzania. <laughs> is, is, that, is that not what you guys have said? No, no. <laughs> you can't live in this country without a KRA PIN. No, Even if you're working or not working. Yeah. But you see now... Yes. Kenyans normally think, if I don't need this PIN, I'm not employed, I don't need a loan, I don't need electricity, why would I need it? Yeah, sure. So it's not a must to go on a carry pin? So no, 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 it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's important, it's important to, to have, have a carry pin. Uh -huh. Because you never know why, when you need to use it. Like right. for instance now, I don't have my carry pin. And I've gotten this huge deal with Naivas or even Kafo that I need to supply them with vegetables. Yes. I shall have lost the business. But yes. that is not what Kerry is saying. Kerry is saying that if you're using the USSD and you don't have the pin number, right. in the process of registration by dialing the star triple two hash, hash selecting yeah. option number five, right. you'll key in your ID. Yes. If you don't have a pin number, it will, there's a pop-up that you're not registered for a pin. Do right. you want to proceed? Yes. You click on yes, it will take you through the entire process of registering for the pin. Yes. Is when you'll be able to invoice. Yes. invoice so yeah. our eating system is very simple. Yes. very accessible and it accommodates everyone every person who is in the business yeah and it's like a transition from the teams it's yes, just yes, that yes. Like e like <laughs> so it's a transition from teams to it complements e teams because oh, the major teams. reasons yeah. why we came up with e teams was from uh -huh. the public outcry that they, there were cost implications right. there are people who did not even have internet there yes. are people who are doing the one of sales Mm -hmm. And they were like, why would I cut a, incur all these costs, yet right. I'm only doing one transaction in probably one year or in a quarter or three times or even twice in a year. Yes. So what basically Kerry did is you complement this. Mm -hmm. So here Teams is running concurrently with Eatings e because yeah. they are both doing this, the three key functionalities. Mm -hmm. That's to generate, generating, signing an invoice, mm -hmm. and the last one is the most important is transmission of the same because it's of yes. no use mm -hmm. that you have generated and signed the invoice then what next yeah we i shall not have the visibility of the same if this 
VAT or the non-VAT transaction has not been sent or mm -hmm. transmitted to us will not be, we shall have lost the importance of the same. So as long as your device, that is Teams device, currently signing, generating, and transmitting the same, yes. you continue using it as is. Yes. Then now we came up with items to complement the same, where right. we had said that we are having four major software solutions within eTeams. That is the eTeams client, which is e suitable client. for taxpayers who are dealing in goods and services. Mm -hmm. That we are having, that one has to be installed either on uh, your laptop, desktop, yeah. or any of your... And it's accessible on uh, iTax? No, no, no. It's accessible on eTeams.care.ge.ke. Uh -huh. So that's the client one. And yes. Then, then we are having the online. Uh -huh. Online is suitable for traders who are dealing in uh, services only. Uh -huh. Both of them have the stock management module where you mm -hmm. register your stock, mm -hmm. the customer you're selling to, yes. then you issue an invoice. Right. Then the third one is uh, the system to system. What we mean system by system to, to system. system is these traders who've already out automated their billing system. Mm -hmm. How it works is we have currently published, uh, I think, 17, yes. 15 to 17 third party integrators. Which, if you log into KRA website under publications, you will see the 17. So, if you have a billing system in mm -hmm. place, mm -hmm. you just need to liaise with them. They come assess your billing system. We approve. Then, you integrate. Yeah. Then now, the last two are the simpler ones: the USSD and yes. the EPOS, which are anchored on the eCitizen account to right. enable everyone. So we can all attest that uh, KRA, regardless that. Uh, However much that we insist of invoicing, we have also provided right. a platform mm -hmm. on doing the same. Right. And uh, I, th I think most billing systems are third party, and I know they need a lot of assessment as well. Yes, yes. yes. Like you said. So yeah. the billing system, the third party integrators, what normally happens is you cannot just wake up as KBC and uh, say that uh, K K KBC rather has invested so much in their software developers within us. So yes. why not? They, they integrate our system with KRS, the ETMC solution. Yes. So the answer is no. And oh, the answer is, is no. <laughs> the answer is <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The answer is no. You cannot right. just jump and right. be a third party integrator mm. or a self integrator. So, so what happens is What are the limitations though? Uh, there's no limitation as long as you have the capability. Right. The only thing we are saying which must be done is you must go through our testing process. Or testing okay. process. Uh -huh. So the requirements, the same, even to the sandbox, has been posted in our website. Mm -hmm. So when you log into KRA website, down there where there's Teams, when you click on Teams, mm -hmm. you'll see all the requirements. When you just click on Install Me, mm -hmm. and you want to be a third-party integrator, you'll have to uh, view the requirements of the same. Yeah. Under the requirements, you... Yes, you will see yourself. where you fall. Yes, you evaluate Do you guys yourself. assess now, even physically, for example, if you have to walk into the person's premises? No, you can. It's not us. Oh, it's us, not where you. we come in on yeah. the third party of the self-integrators is where we are providing the visibility from our sandbox. All right. I so now it. as KBC, yeah. you want to be a self-integrator, you will right. read through our requirements on the website, you, mm. tasks, you start testing. Yes. When you start testing through our sandbox, we will approve you on the same. Mm. After which, we will now call you for a demo. Right. A demo means you need to show us that this your system, if integrated with us, yes. with our ETIM system, right. will it be able to mm -hmm. generate a valid invoice. Yes. Then after that we publish you, we go for an authorization meeting, right. we request for some documentation, then yeah. you're published on our website. So it's a, it's a process, it's not just a click and it's tap. And for integration, if you want yeah. to be either third party or yeah. uh, or a self-integrator, yeah. it's not a one-day thing. Yes, because that's a very sensitive <laughs> part, by the way. No fraudster can survive Apple. <laughs> very true. No fraudster can survive Apple. But so, so far, this could be my, uh, my first, third, last question to you before we exit. Uh, how long so far have you guys been in operation since inception? And so far, maybe how, how far and how massive is the feedback from Kenyans? And then also, how's the reception of it? Maybe if you can just give the starts before we exit. Uh, as you're aware that uh, in 2021, we had introduced Teams. Mm -hmm. And Teams, our major focus was on the VAT registered taxpayers. Right. The VAT registered, the registered taxpayers. Yeah. So what happened is we had quite a number on boarding the VAT. Mm -hmm. 
then onboarding teams rather mm -hmm. then we were like there are some VAT traders mm -hmm. who have active VAT traders yes. who have not onboarded for one reason or the other yes. and that is when we came up with it in so as at now we are at around 200 registered active you know you can be registered for VAT but yes you need those erroneous registrations yes so for the active VAT traders we are at 200 and the number keeps rising mm -hmm. so as at now I can say that we are at 200 and when we go to the office we find that we have moved from 200 to 300 it's yes. a continuous process mm -hmm. and everyone is on boarding and right. the feedback we have uh, gotten from uh, the taxpayers is very encouraging right. taxpayers have really appreciated right. the steps that Kerry has taken Mm -hmm. into ensuring that everyone is comfortable from wherever they sit. Mm -hmm. Come to think of it, even e-citizen, you can even access it from your comfort exactly. of your house. Exactly. So those are the enhancements that we had to do with our invoicing system, right. which made the taxpayers actually to appreciate. Mm -hmm. And again, you heard of the population of the VAT return, right? Yes. So when you issue a valid tax invoice, mm -hmm. what does it translate into your VAT return or even your income tax return at the end of the year? Mm -hmm. The auto population, what it means, it has reduced the time that right. we used to take to input or key in each invoice. Yeah. Be it a sale or a purchase, you had to record them manually. But right. now, because of the visibility again, taxpayers right. have begun to appreciate that indeed we have gone a step higher. Yes. So that when this return is populated, all they need to do is just counter check, validate, and send. Right. And again, the other part that the taxpayers have really, really appreciated right. is the refund mm -hmm. of uh, the VAT. Let's say they have any refunds of the liabilities that they have incurred in the system. Right. Initially, this refund process would have taken a very long time. Mm -hmm. Reason being, we would request for these invoices, which might even be lost right. in the course of the, the mm -hmm. time, that the trading time. Right. But because now Kiara is having visibility of the transactions, all the transactions that had been done on the same, right. there's no need of requesting you to bring all right. this documentation. So that is the area where, that is among the areas that taxpayers are really appreciating right. amongst others. Yes. Uh, I, I think we should continue and have this conversation even deeper. But then has it enhanced operations at KRA in terms of even collecting uh, normal taxes and revenue? Has that it is, enhanced? That is a very good one. Uh -huh. And uh, truth be told, we have seen a huge mm -hmm. increase in VAT right. to start with. Mm -hmm. There has been a rise in VAT collection. Mm -hmm. And uh, by our end of the year, that is by July, we are looking towards 60 billion right if everything after everyone has onboarded items so our yeah. pro projection is high right and this projection we have seen growth you know growth is growth however minimal or little right. it is it's growth yes so there's a very significant growth in vat collection yes and uh, even compliance per se has right. gone high because mm -hmm. now for you to trade with me you need to know that i have to issue you an invoice so that at the end of the month or the year i need to claim Yes. the expense on the same. So there's very huge growth right. in VAT uptake and right. the compliance both within the officers and even the taxpayers end. Uh, right, fantastic. Has it enhanced maybe the convincing power between traders? For example, you've said uh, for you to trade between another business and another. Do, do you think it's, it, it has enhanced and even uh, given that you know, positive outlook of traders? From where we sit, the traders are really appreciative. Because... Uh -huh. uh, where we stand is no claims, period. Yeah. So for the traders also, you see now traders also feel appreciated when yes. they know that they are trading with someone who is legit. Right. So right. when I'm trading with someone whom I know is compliant mm. with the law, I'm right. very confident of the same. And right. these are feedback that we've gotten from major companies that mm. indeed the information that we are passing down has yes. really reached the targeted audience. Right. Yes. Well, uh, before, we, before you tell us maybe uh, how people can get to access you and maybe get even assistance, even on the stories of filing taxes, uh, predictably for, I believe it's financial year 2023, 2024, in terms of your collection, yes. how much are you predicting so far in terms of collection? If you are to, you know, just uh, say the number for this year, predictably. For this year, if yes. all goes well and everyone is onboarded eating, so that is the VAT and non VAT active traders, mm -hmm. our projection is a 60 billion. Wow. So uh, that's huge. So that can pay our uh, external debt. <laughs> 
that can pay us external debt and the still pay the following external debt. The rider is <laughs> if, uh -huh. if the active uh -huh. traders uh -huh. on board items. Oh, that is the bottom line. Yes, because you see now how will we collect if you don't on board? Yeah. How will we collect if you don't trade? Yes, then it, needs, it means that you guys have a task, civic education and you have to invest in it. And thanks to you that you're here on TV talking about this. Because a lot of people are really wondering, and I'm sure after some time they'll be really shocked that they needed to have watched this conversation right now. The beauty about it is, is the, that uh, we don't just have this one off and sit back and say, that's it. Mm -hmm. We are having teams which are out right. for the civic education, the taxpayers' education, Yes. The engagements we are having numerous because I might be willing yeah. to pay my taxes, but I don't have the correct information. Yes. How would I do that? Mm. And a lot of people hate taxes. What do they want? Yes. So we have put measures in place. Mm -hmm. just to ensure that this information reaches the targeted audience. Right. And uh, whenever we, we are in the office and a taxpayer walks in, the first question they normally ask, how come I didn't know this earlier? Mm. Civic education, maybe. Yes. So yeah. we are like, mm. we've conducted these sensitizations, but probably right. the timings are the ones which are not conducive because at times you conduct these educations, the tax pay educations virtually, right. and probably at that time you're engaged in something. So we yes. just find we reach a section of the people, yes. and at times you do the physical ones, yeah. and you're not present. So I think the physical ones should work better for those that are highly engaged, especially in the interiors. Yes, yes. Because I'm sure they'll be wondering, Sasa, we are not nini, eat teams nini, stop stressing us. <laughs> We've had the physical ones, uh -huh. and it's continuous. Right. As I said, that we don't just do it one off. Mm -hmm. The physical training is continuous. Right. And we have ensured that we have reached major towns and cities within the country just to ensure that yes. a majority yes. understands uh -huh. and even knows the benefits of even items. Right. Yes. All right. Now you can tell. Ah, la last one. Is it a must to a lipid tax? Because uh, <laughs> I was saying that in our <laughs> intro while we were taking a break, and somebody say it's not a must. Now that you're an expert and you've been at the institution clocking a decade now, is it a must for a Kenyan citizen to pay tax? That's a good one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the answer is everyone mm -hmm. is supposed to pay their fair share of their taxes uh -huh. unless mm -hmm. you're exempted. Uh -huh. Wow, that's state. another topic. <laughs> who is, who is again liable for tax exemption? <laughs> can we have a part two, please? Because there's there's businesses that can be tax exempted. I understand stories. Is that tax? Is it amnesty or immunity? Amnesty. Amnesty, right? Yes. But we are out of time. Imagine we can't continue. Imagine we can't. So tell <laughs> tell us where people <laughs> can access you if they maybe want to again even get further civic education or maybe they want to consult. This is your camera and maybe your also your final short, just short in under thirty seconds. Word regarding e items right here as we go. Thanks again. At this particular time, I would just want to appreciate the viewers for taking their time to join this live on items. And uh, I would just want to give emphasis that ETIMS is not a tax. Rather, ETIMS is a very simple solution just to aid you in your invoicing during your daily, daily transactions. The second one, I would just want to give uh, the taxpayer opportunity to visit us. You can visit us. We are located at Jaquart Towers, 8th floor, Kenyatta Avenue, just within town. You can also reach us through our mobile numbers, which are published in our CARE website. And again, you can also send us an email for guidance and clarifications on team support at care.geo.ke. And the last one, again, if you're a tech savvy and you feel that uh, you would not be having time to visit us, we have put very simple how-to videos on the YouTube channels yes. that someone can just have a look at it learn more about the invoicing, then when you're stuck, you can reach out to us for assistance. Oh, there's a number there. Yes, yes. Yes, and you're not giving your own number. 
hapa yani yake haezi namba yangu iko hapo kwa iko hapo kwa hiyo site thank you so much by the way i think there's a lot of conversation we need to have around that and i'll ensure that we continue to have this conversation nice. um, and, and when is the next filing are you announcing it uh, uh, the Actually, filing the deadline for filing. The deadline for filing. Yes. As I mentioned year. earlier, the deadline for filing de is dependent uh -huh. on the tax, tax obligation you're having. Right. So the income tax company uh -huh. and the income tax individual, yes. the deadline is on 30th June. The 30th of June. Yes, this, this year. This, this year. Yes. So I'm tege. Rasha, I'm not sure to Kenyans. But we're not also <laughs> saying that you wait till the deadline. Yes. It's open now. You can start filing your returns because the, yes. the pay had been sent for the for the right. previous year. So you can yes. file as early as now yeah. to avoid the last minute rush. I don't know if you're going to I feel like we're just getting <laughs> started, but we have to go. <laughs> Seriously, I'm done. So, so, thank you so much, Ms. Velma Miguta. She is an ETIMS expert at Kenya Revenue Authority, the legendary carrier, right? And thank you so much for sharing with us uh, insights about that. And pretty sure a lot of people have learned a lot. And if they've not, I don't know. You need to just log on to that website and make that call. Karibu sana and thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Karibu sana. All right, we take a break right now. Coming up is an interesting conversation as well with a guest who is already live with us in the studio. So Steph is coming up just shortly. Continue to engage with us at Y244 channel and at Brian Sako 101. See you in just a bit.